Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here, and this week I'm reviewing this. The Etcher Premium Student Series of 24 Half Pan Watercolours. I'll be testing some of these colours by painting a small landscape painting uh, later in the video, approximately 8 minutes in, for those of you who'd like to hop forwards just to see the painting demo. Um, but first, I'd like to take a proper look at this set and do a little unboxing for us all. So, this is the boxed set. This is how it arrived uh, in this beautiful and elegant grey packaging, marked, of course, with the Etcher logo uh, and with some info on the back here. This is a list of the colours included, as well as this handy little swatch chart. A uh, really nice touch, of course. Uh, if you're buying a set, it's nice to uh, have a little bit of a preview as to what you can expect to find inside it. The closure is magnetic, so you can just uh, flip it open and see. Uh, we've got a little bit of information in here. We believe art has the power to make this world a better place. Well, you can't really say fairer than that, can you? So, underneath here, we have this... Uh, lovely soft black uh, microfiber cloth that comes with the set. Uh, I always think it's a lovely touch when um, watercolour sets like this come with a couple of little extras, it just helps it feel a little bit more of a treat and even more luxurious. So we've also got some stickers here as well, which again uh, is rather fun. It means uh, I guess you can customise your palette uh, by sticking them on the outside or uh, customise your sketchbook uh, if you have a mind to. And now this is the actual paint tin that I am struggling to lift out of the box slightly. Very nice, we've got a uh, metal tin here, classic black, uh, with this paper sleeve, uh, which has got a key on the back for the light fast rating and the pigment transparency of the paints inside. So that's a really handy thing to refer to. So I'm just going to uh, pop this box out of the way for now, uh, and let's uh, crack open the tin and uh, see what we have inside. So the cardboard sleeve simply uh, slips off, it's not stuck on, uh, as you can see, uh, and you can open up the tin to reveal two sets of uh, mixing wells. We've got one large set at the top and the smaller ones here at the bottom, which is always a really handy touch for uh, watercolours, especially if you want to take this set out and work plein air, you've got your mixing wells built in. Uh, it also comes with this lovely um, swatching card. This is on cream colour paper, as you can see. We've got all the names there, uh, ready to put a nice little swatch of colour underneath each one. So that's a handy little reference guide. You can see we've also got some familiar names here. We've got things like Prussian Blue and Cobalt Blue, um, sort of classic colours that are familiar part of a watercolourist's repertoire. Um, but we also have some slightly um, different colour names. We have things like the uh, Llama Orange, Ocean Turquoise, um, really interesting sounding colours here. So I'm just going to show you them quickly, all wrapped up and looking very pretty, looking very smart. I must say I am a fan of the Etcher's uh, Llama logo. Um, yeah, looking really nice and uh, absolutely can't wait to get to grips with this palette. So I'm going to start by uh, unwrapping the colours and uh, we'll see what the actual uh, paint pans look like. So I'm going to go ahead and unwrap them all, but I'm beginning here with this first one, which is pure white. Um, you can see that the paper wrap actually has the um, transparency and the light fastness rating on it uh, in shorthand, which you can use with the key here. So you can see this is an opaque colour with excellent light fast rating, which is uh, rather nice. Always nice to see the pigment number as well, for those of us interested in that sort of thing. Um, the wrap is very simply attached, there's I think a little bit of glue on either side, which you can just pull away uh, and pop the pan back into its place. Uh, the one downside for me is that the uh, colour and light fastness rating etc aren't printed on the actual um, plastic pan itself. Um, I'm probably going to get a permanent marker and write it on the bottom of uh, this paint and all of the other paints as well just because I forget things very easily uh, and it's nice to have that sort of thing to refer to. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a speed unwrapping of all of these other colours now, just because I want to show you them all, how pretty they look uh, in the set together. But um, I'm sure you don't want to sit through an extra 10 minutes of me sitting here slowly and laboriously unwrapping each and every single one. But all the wraps are the same. They all have the light fastness rating and the opacity rating on them, um, which is, uh, again, really handy. Um, but yeah, here they are. And don't they look lovely? <laughs> it's been a while since I had a new uh, pan of, of uh, watercolour paints to try, so I'm looking forward to testing out this set. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to do a little swatch test uh, just to um, see what the colours look like really simply just swatching them out on a piece of regular white watercolour paper. So all I did for this, as you can see, was just spray the set as a whole with a little misting of clean water. And now I'm just going through them with my flat brush and doing some really simple swatches down the paper. I'm following the order of the paints as they are laid out in the tin. Uh, and you can see we've got a wonderful variety of uh, colours here, actually. Really interesting choices, I think, for a set. Uh, I think quite a comprehensive uh, set as well. You can see here I've uh, just gone through and labelled them all quickly, so feel free to pause the video and have a good old look. In my opinion, this is a really nice selection of colours here. You can see we've got plenty of the primaries. Um, as well as a few browns and a few premixed greens, which is always a nice touch because I do know that some people uh, aren't fans of mixing their own greens, so to have them pre-made um, is a really useful touch. Uh, of course, you've got your neutralizers, you've got your white and your black uh, and your browns. Uh, all in all, I'm pretty impressed so far. Um, I already did one test of this set um, using the sort of brighter colors. This is my Summer Sandhill Cranes uh, painting. <laughs> Uh, and you can find the uh, demonstration for this on my Patreon page if you'd like to see it, uh, just by clicking on the link below. Um, this was a really fun one to paint and as you can see the colours so far have proved to be wonderfully vibrant and uh, really nice and bright. But today I'm going to be painting something slightly different. I'm going to be testing out a landscape painting uh, using some of the sort of more blue grey tones. So first things first, cleaning off the, uh, the paint wells, ready to start painting. You can see just a quick spritz of water and a little scrub with a piece of kitchen towel uh, and the paint lifts off really nicely and we're ready to paint. So to begin this painting, I wanted quite a sort of subtle, stormy sky blue colour. So rather than using these paints straight from the pans, I decided to try and mix up something rather nice. So I'm using ultramarine blue mixed with cobalt blue here. Uh, and I'm also adding a touch of the soulless black, which uh, apart from being wonderfully named, um, is working quite well here as a sort of neutralizer. I'm using it much in the same way that I would use a Payne's gray or a neutral tint, uh, neither of which is in this set, but the soulless black seems to work quite well um, in that capacity in terms of dulling down these very vibrant blues and turning them into something a little bit more subtle. As you can see the paint's going on really nicely so far. I'm working wet and wet here. Uh, I've already added a bit of clean water to the top two-thirds of this square watercolour block that I'm working on uh, and you can see the paint's going on nice and cleanly. We're getting a good sort of flow um, we're also starting to get a little bit of granulation in the sky, which is really rather nice. And you can see as well, I'm just taking some more of this soulless black uh, and mixing it with the blue and with more water, and I'm creating a storm cloud, really very simply, just by placing it along in this diagonal and pulling a little bit of the colour down towards the bottom of the sky. And just for anybody who's interested, um, I'm using an Arsh brand watercolour block to paint on today. Um, it's quite a small one as you can see, 20 by 20 centimetres. Um, cold pressed paper, um, 140 pound weight, which is uh, a really nice weight to work on when you're doing lots of wet and wet work like this. You can see um, this small block is actually holding up really well to the water and it's not buckling and um, it's staying pretty flat and uh, I'm able to keep working on it. As you can see I'm sort of building up the colour, moving it around a little bit, just trying to build up the shape of that storm cloud uh, and 
put in here you can see a little bit of detail going into the horizon just really simple using again the soulless black the same way that I would use my Payne's grey or neutral tint and just build up uh, basically a little bit of a distant tree line there so after leaving the sky colours to sit for a few minutes and diffuse and uh, for the paint to work its magic on the paper I'm going to mix up a nice earthy shade to paint the foreground using Mighty Ochre, Burnt Sienna and some more Soulless Black. The uh, Mighty Ochre I believe is Yellow Ochre by another name um, and the Burnt Sienna of course is another watercolorist classic. Um, both colours are really nice to use as well. You can see I hope that um, so far all of these half pans have been pretty highly pigmented you know, when I take up a bit of colour with my brush, it's always lovely and strong uh, and they mix well together as you've seen too. They also wet up very quickly, just need to give them a quick spray or a quick dab of water. You don't need to sit around waiting for the colour to sort of to come up and be ready to use. You know, you can give them a quick spray and then almost straight away you're ready to go. And despite the fact that these, uh, this set has got lots of lovely sort of bright clean colours in it, you can still, uh, if you're like me, you can still mix up some of these gloriously sludgy sort of olivey dark earthy colours as well, which I love so much. And you can see I'm just applying this colour I've mixed using the dry brushing technique and uh, my small mop brush, or I should say mid-sized mop brush, sorry, this is a size 10. Uh, which is a really nice size uh, when you're painting on uh, this scale of paper. And so you can see I'm just applying this foreground colour um, really quite loosely, leaving plenty of white space. I'm holding the brush quite high up the handle in order to achieve this looseness in my brush strokes. Uh, and of course not oversaturating the brush too heavily means that you can dry brush a lot easier as well. Uh, but I'm also varying the colour slightly so I'm using this sludgy mix as my sort of main base colour for the foreground but I'm also able to pull in extra little touches of the ochre and of the neutral tint as well. You can see here I've done a few extra little stripes here and there to just start adding a bit of depth uh, and a little bit of sort of detail into this foreground. And now what I'm going to do is um, take up the uh, same blue colour that I mixed up for my sky and uh, just apply it really loosely across this open space here. Uh, I'm just going to turn this into a small uh, sort of pond or body of water. And as you can see here, this blue colour went on really nicely uh, onto dry paper, whereas before I put it on wet paper, um, both seem to work really, really well. Um, and now I'm just darkening down that sludgy colour that I made before using some extra uh, soulless black uh, and a little of the blue as well which can also be a fantastic neutraliser if you've got sort of uh, yellow brown tones that you want to darken down a little bit um, but I'm just using that to pull a little bit of detail around the outside of this lake and here you can see I'm adding um, a bit of one of the greens this is leaf green uh, from the palette as well which is um, a really nice sort of a, a mid-green, I would say. It's not too bright, but it's not um, very dark as well. It's a nice mid-tone, but as you can see, it actually mixes really beautifully with these darker colours to create something a little, a little darker, a little stronger. Um, and I'm just using my round quill brush um, to create this sort of sense of a bit of foliage, a little bit of shrubbery coming up, growing perhaps from the water provided uh, on the outskirts of this lake. Um, and that's, this is actually really fun to do as well with the little brush to just make um, these uh, really loose um, marks here in this rough shape of some foliage or some shrubbery. Um, and I think it looks really effective as part of a loose landscape. Uh, and most importantly, it's also fun. Now to just bolster that leaf green, um, I'm adding an extra little pop of colour using some of the brighter colours in this palette. Um, so this is the lime green, which is wonderfully vibrant. 
I've watered it down a little bit because it is um, very, very strong. Uh, and then I'm just going to dot in a little bit of the lemon yellow as well, which is another lovely bright colour. You can see it going in here, it looks quite strong, but don't worry, it's going to diffuse down and just soften these greens into something um, nice and bright that's going to stand up to this um, stormy sky we've got going on overhead. And there you see that lemon yellow has softened really nicely. We've just got some really nice interesting shades of green around that lower foreground. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to test out this uh, soulless black on its own. And I'm going to use it to paint in um, a nice little tree here on the right. I'm going for something a little bit loose, a little bit raggedy, um, quite statuesque to stand up against this uh, deep rich sky we've got coming in from the left. Um, I should add at this point that the uh, sky area has now fully dried, um, so I'm painting uh, wet onto dry at this point. So we're not getting any diffusion or softness here, we're getting these uh, really crisp, sharp lines from the soulless black, which is really nice. Uh, you can see as well that we've got a lovely opacity here, a lovely strength of colour. Um, again, a decently high pigment load from this little pan. Uh, as with my sword liner brush, I'm able to just keep on adding these thin wispy branches um, without having to lift my brush off the paper too regularly to pick up more colour. So all I'm going to do now is just continue building up the tree shape in these fine uh, tiny little strokes until I'm satisfied uh, with the shape of it. And here we go, I'm just finishing off the uh, tree for you now. Uh, this is basically just a matter of, again, just as I said, building up the shape using really fine strokes, quite short strokes of the brush. Um, I would recommend either the sword liner or a regular liner brush for this because the, uh, the long, the really nice long bristles allow for plenty of um, sort of paint and water to be picked up at any one time and it means you can just keep going without having to constantly uh, dip back into your water or your paint palette. And now just for a finishing touch, I'm going to dip back into the, uh, the soulless black to add a scattering of birds across the sky. Of course, uh, if you want to follow along with this tutorial but you don't have this paint set, you can very easily substitute most of these colours for uh, regular watercolour sort of paints from other brands. Um, a lot of the ones that I've used are quite classic colours such as ultramarine, cobalt, um, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, these can be found from pretty much any uh, good watercolour brand of paint. So now here is the finished painting, I've left it to dry completely. Um, so we've just got one step left, which is to remove this top sheet from the watercolour block. And uh, I don't normally include this in videos, but I'm just going to show you quickly today. All you need is a palette knife. Uh, you don't need a very sharp knife, you don't want to damage any of the sheets of cotton paper. So a palette knife, uh, just run very gently and slowly uh, around the edge of the paper, just breaking through that glue there. Um, this can sometimes be a little bit awkward if the glue is very thick, um, but just take your time and um, take care not to damage any of the uh, cotton paper sheets uh, below the one that you're working on. Most watercolour blocks will have a small area like this one at the top that's been left clear of glue where you uh, can start the removal process. And you can see here we are, here's the finished painting, free from the uh, watercolour block, nice and simple. Uh, and I must say I'm really pleased with how these etcher paints performed. You can see if we close in on this sky here, you can see there's some lovely granulation here among those clouds. Um, really nice soft blended edges uh, from this paint as well as a decently high pigment load. Um, lovely mixing and you can see these greens here have added the extra little pop of colour into this quite moody, quite stormy little landscape. And of course we've got our distant birds flying away. So thank you very much everybody for watching. Um, any questions please pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I really enjoyed reviewing this etcher set and I do plan to keep using it. Um, if you'd like to see another test, um, testing out some of the brighter shades um, from this etcher paint set, 
Uh, don't forget to hop over to my Patreon page following the link below where you can watch the uh, demonstration uh, for this rather brighter summery painting with a couple of handsome sandhill cranes as well. Um, but overall I must say I was impressed. The general pigment load was very good from this set of paints and while I usually uh, use two paints for my own personal work I do plan to keep hold of this and keep using it and perhaps try and warm up to using pans as well as tubes and get a little bit of versatility um, in my life. Um, the colour selection was really pleasant to work with. I know there's quite a, quite a few that I didn't test today and um, if people did enjoy this review then perhaps we'll do another one um, utilising some of the brighter colours. Um, but that's all from me today. Um, thank you everybody so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you all again soon in the next video.